So the summary for this is an experience-based brain and biological development that sends three feet into your head, affects health, learning, and behavior. So the job of the council is to try to get all of you to close the gap between what we know and what we do. And I'm going to try to take you through what we know. The barriers to doing this are ma many, but lack of understanding is hugely important. I had the opportunity to speak to 12 senior investment officers of the National Bank of Canada, all well paid, all highly intelligent, been to universities. When we finished taking them through this for an hour, one group in Montreal, the other group in Toronto, marvelous telecommunications technique, so they all said at the end, wow, nobody ever taught us this. Now, isn't that interesting? Here are people who have gone to a university and don't have a clue about the subject in a very major role in the financing of systems in our country. They were stunned by it, so you have to take that. There are a whole list of other factors here which are important, which all of you have to change if you're trying to make the story move ahead. So lack of understanding. Next one going to sleep, um, <laughs> is a hugely important issue. Next. Now, if we could open up Robin's head, uh, and let, <laughs> we'd see a jelly-like structure called a brain. Next. Which is composed of a billion of these cells, billions, neurons, which have trillions of connections. Do you ever ask yourself how these things, structures, develop their function? All your neurons in your head have the same gene coding. How do the ones back here differentiate for vision? How do the ones here differentiate for sound? How do they form their pathways, their connections? It's all driven by experience. And so the simplest way to put it, we did learn through the work the bio physiological, biological scientists in Harvard did in the 1960s, who spotted that children that are born with cataracts in their lens and their eyes cannot get visual signals back into that part of the brain. If later on you remove the cataract, they do not develop normal vision. Whereas those of you in my age group, when you get your cataract and remove it, you'll have normal vision. And so they reason from this evidence, there's something about the stimuli passing into the brain in the early ears that cause the neurons back here to differentiate to be able to interpret the signals from your eye. We now know the same is true for sound in this area. All the other pathways aren't put in space yet, but that's the first evidence that experience interacts with genetic structures to differentiate neuron function in your head. We'll come back to that a little bit more. Secondly, the, st the stimulation also affects the connections, how you form the neural pathways. So that if you look at this st story and, and summarize it, Early experience in brain architecture, architecture and function, it affects gene expression and the formation of the neural pathways. It shapes emotion, regulates temperament, and social development. All of you working in the field see this. I'm now saying this is linked in terms of early experience. It shapes language and literacy capability in spades. It shapes perceptual and cognitive ability it shapes physical and mental health and behavior in adult life. Now, any of you who are skiers or swimmers, et cetera, know if your child begins to learn those activities between two and three, they'll perform a hell of a lot better than if you try to get them to do it at 30. That's just simply the development of your brain and it affects all the components. And it shapes physical activity and skiing and things like that. So I learned to ski at 40, because I had to take all these brats out to the ski hill every Sunday morning. <laughs> and Jim Mustard learned to ski at four, and I was always embarrassed. He was a hell of a lot better skier than I ever was. So if you want to think about this in terms of neural pathways, this is Chuck Nelson's work, who is now in the Department of Psychology at Harvard. He knew that the sensing pathways, like vision and sound, form early. And so they actually form in utero, and the formation is largely over by the age of one. You can't develop language unless these pathways develop. 